Hello friends, this video on force and pressure part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have got a better understanding of what is force, let us talk about the various types of forces. So the first type of force is contact force. So the name itself defines it. Contact, that means when the object is in direct contact, then it is said to be a contact force. So force between objects in direct contact with each other. Now when I say direct contact, that doesn't mean that both the objects should always be in direct contact. They can be in contact through a third object as well. Let me give you some examples. Muscular force, frictional force, these are all examples of contact forces. Now we will discuss about them in detail a little later. Let us first look at some of the common examples which will help you to understand what is the meaning of direct contact. So here if you see who is applying the force, this person. Where is he applying the force on this object? So if you see here, the hands of the person are in direct contact with this object. So that means there is a direct contact. So this is an example of contact force. Now what type of force is being applied? The person is applying a force but the force is being applied by which part of his body? It is being applied by his muscles. So this is a muscular force. So here you can see the muscular force is a contact force because here every time the person will be in contact with the object. Let us look at another example. This person carrying this heavy load on his back. So he is definitely applying some force on this box. So here again, if you see, there is contact. So this is also an example of contact force. Look at this example where you do not have direct contact with the object, but you have contact with the object through some other object. Now, if you look at this, what do you see? This is the ball. So the ball is being touched through this rod. And who is holding the rod? A person. So a person's hand is in contact with this rod and this rod will come in contact with the ball. Now as soon as it, it applies, as soon as the person applies a force on the rod, the rod will apply a force on the ball and the ball will start moving. So this is also an example of contact force because here also the hand is in direct contact with the ball through this rod. So this is also an example of contact force. So whenever we talk about contact force, it means that the object is in direct contact with the other object which is applying force. So in this case, one object is this box, the other object is the person who is applying the force. Let us look at the second type of force which are non-contact force. Now, very obviously that in this case, there is going to be no contact between the two objects. So the objects are not in direct contact with each other. So basically they are not going to touch each other, but still there is a force which is existing between them. Let us look at some examples. Gravitational force, electrostatic force. These are examples of non-contact forces. So what kind of force are they? Just look at the two magnets. What happens when you bring two magnets close to each other? We all know that opposite poles of magnets attract one another and like poles, they repel one another. So in this case, if you see, this is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. This is another magnet, North Pole, South Pole. So these are opposite poles. So what happens to the opposite poles? They tend to attract one another. So what happened? Due to the presence of a magnetic force, the, object, the magnets moved. So there existed a force, an attractive force because of which this change in motion happened. But when this force existed, that time the two magnets were not in contact. So this type of force is an example of non-contact force. Similarly, when the like poles are brought together, they repel and they move apart from each other. So in this case also, the force, when the force existed, that time also the two objects were not in contact with each other. Look at an example where an apple falls from the tree and it falls to the ground. Now why doesn't the apple fly in the sky? Why does it fall to the ground? Because there is something which is attracting the apple towards the earth and that is the gravitational force of the earth. So due to the force of gravity, any object, whenever 
left to itself it tends to fall to the ground so you you have a pen in your hand just leave it just do not hold it what will happen the pen will fall to the ground so that is due to the force of gravity so when the pen started falling to the ground so a force of attraction existed between the earth and the pen so even though they were not in contact with each other that force existed so therefore these types of forces are examples of non contact forces so in this chapter we are going to talk about all these four forces muscular frictional gravitational and electrostatic so let us now talk about the contact forces in detail so the first contact force that we will discuss is the muscular force so it is the force which is due to the action of muscles now as i said all types of movement which takes place in our body like we move our hands we move our legs so all these movement happens due to the action or the activity of muscles present inside our body so this force enables movement of different body parts so you think of any sport which you play for example while playing football you need movement of your hands as well as legs while playing basketball again you need to jump you need to move your hands so all these movements take place due to your muscles while you lift a heavy box on your back so there also your hand needs to apply some force on the box so this force also originates from the muscles of the body when you push a box or when you pull a box so that movement of your body takes place due to muscles so in each of these examples the movement of your body happens due to the movement of the muscles so these are all examples of muscular force so if you look at each of these examples you see that in all of them the move the the body part is always in contact with the object so if you see here your hands are in contact with the object you see here again your hands are in contact with the object here again the leg is in contact with the object so here the ball again is in contact with your hand so the body part is always in contact with the object and that is why this type of force is a contact force so this is muscular force so let us look at some of some more examples of muscular force now when we talk about muscular force let us talk about some movement which takes place inside our body which is not uh, visible from outside let's talk about the digestive system what happens when you eat food now we eat food or we take in the food inside our body through our mouth now from mouth it passes through a food pipe and then through this food pipe it finally reaches the stomach where the process of digestion starts so this is stomach and this is the food pipe which is also known as esophagus so now here the movement of food through this food pipe is possible due to the muscular movements of uh, the the wall of this food pipe so the food pipe is muscular in nature it is made up of muscles and you by the movement of these muscles it allows the food to get along or it allows the food to pass through this food pipe so this is also muscular force so here also if you see the object here is the food so it is applying some force on the food and that is why the food is able to move through the food pipe we talk about the respiratory system so even in case of respiratory system you see there is a diaphragm so this is called diaphragm which is muscular in nature so that is why when you breathe in and when you breathe out so the space is extra space for the inhaled air is being created by with by the movement of this muscular diaphragm so when this muscular diaphragm move up so what happens air goes out and when air comes in so in order to accommodate that extra amount of air coming in the diaphragm moves down so that it can create more space in the thoracic cavity so that that that's how uh, the movement of muscles or muscular force uh, takes place even inside our body so it is not only visible from outside in external body movements but even inside the body there are several movements which happen due to muscular force Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.